Hey everybody, this is uh, Jason Path with Power Drone Dudes. I'm the guy over here on the left-hand side. My partner in crime, Mr. Aaron Ames, couldn't be with me today, so I'll be flying solo. But we wanted to talk to you and share with you one of the sections that we presented at during last week's conference. Uh, and this one was the EUCI conference specifically for UAS systems inside the electric utility industry. Now the area that I want to talk about specifically is one that's been near and dear to my heart for over 25 years now and that's visualization technology, specifically photo simulations and animations. So let me tell you the challenge that we've faced for the last 25 years. Um, the area shown here in yellow is where we can currently operate uh, based on FAA rules and regulations where we typically operate drones and that is anywhere from zero to about 400 feet. Of course we can get uh, authorization to fly a little bit higher and into other classes. But traditionally whenever I wanted to get a, a photo simulation uh, and get an aerial view of that of that subject I had to do it with a helicopter and that oftentimes left me hanging on a skid uh, with a window open outside of a helicopter and I found myself having to use telephoto lenses and stitching photographs together in order to get any sort of clarity for aerial views. And now that we can fly UASs anywhere from this 0 to 400 foot mark safely, it has opened up a world of possibilities for us. So let me demonstrate a little bit of that. Here's an example of a project that we had up in um, central Idaho, it's a transportation project, but one of the things that we had to do was demonstrate what the project was going to look like within context of the existing land uses that are there, and I'll show you that here. Um, so here's the proposed transportation project, and by getting down into that 0 to 400 foot level, in this case I think it was about 35 feet, about treetop height in, in this case, but by getting down into space, now we can start seeing a lot more detail and explain a lot more of the project to our regulatory agencies, our, our public, uh, that are very concerned about these type of projects. Um, so it enables to get this, this beautiful view and this beautiful context, uh, something we haven't been able to do before. An example of an architectural project. Uh, transmission line projects. You know, we often get asked to simulate what views are going to look like from residential conditions. So in this case, we wanted to know what views are going to look like outside of a second story window. And when we don't have access to get into these areas or we can't get inside the home, we can use drones now to get up to that second story view and get a perspective that we just normally could not get uh, with traditional means. So the drones have opened up a lot of possibilities for us, and they're very precise. Bring them into our 3D software and get some very accurate results for photo simulations. The other area that it's really helped us out a lot is in the animation space. Um, again, when we wanted to overlay 3D information over the top of video footage, like you're seeing right here, um, whenever we wanted to overlay video uh, 3D footage represented here by the substation we had to get the helicopter again and we had to rent very expensive gimbals and it took a lot of time a lot of effort again we couldn't get below really that 400 foot hard deck hard deck without special exemptions um, but now that we can play in this space it opens up a world of possibilities the other thing that the drones give us is they give us telemetry information they give us the gps positioning they give us the speed and with the json file uh, that's the file that you can get out of PIX4D and some of the other uh, flight control systems. We can get the pitch, the yaw, the roll, the camera information, and all of that helps us line up our 3D information and our virtual cameras with the cameras that we used uh, uh, attached to the drones. Here's another cool thing. I didn't even realize it after we'd done it. We do a lot of glare studies, and that is analyzing reflectivity and what it would have on pilots in and around airports. So now by doing this, we can simulate flight paths and simulate the impacts to the pilots by combining the 3D information, correct reflective materials, position of the sun. We can start seeing how these things would impact a pilot upon final approach. So anyway, I thought I'd share that information with you today. And if you have any questions, just go ahead and leave those in the comments. Thank you for watching.